Okay, so today we are going to finally color our sugar skull clay shape. So right here you see mine. Um, I try to make it as flat, um, kind of like smooth as possible. And if I look, you always should choose the side that is the smoothest. Um, so I think I'm going to go for this side right here. Um, if there's any extra flour, you want to dust that off because it's going to get caught on your color markers and it's going to kind of maybe mess them up a bit. So you want to make sure that you get all of that out first. And remember that some of the key features of the sugar skull is that the nose is an upside down heart. Uh, the eyes are ovals and you could put any design inside. Um, and the teeth sort of look like almonds and then you put a line across. So I'm just recapping that. I'm gonna zoom into my sugar skull. Now this is a little tricky because I am gonna be drawing it upside down. Um, the other thing that you wanna make sure is that you incorporate at least one flower. Now it doesn't have to be the full flower. It could be part of a flower. Um, and remember all the things that we've learned throughout the years with art, which means that you could put some dot art, incorporate that put some nice bright colors or even some dark colors if you want to kind of create some contrast. So let's just go ahead. Um, and I usually like to do this for winter holidays. Um, it's not, sugar skulls are not strictly a Halloween type of thing. You can definitely do them all year round. They are very beautiful in my opinion. Um, so I don't have a lot of colors, but I do have sun. So I'm going to make sure that I first start off with the nose. Now you wanna make sure that this section right here, which is the forehead, you're not gonna put the eyes up here. You wanna be able to put the eyes relatively over here, the nose around here, and then the mouth there. And you could definitely leave some space for the, the chin area to have some design. So I'm gonna go ahead with a thinner marker over here, and I'm going to do first the oval eyes. Okay, they can be as big as you want, but you do want to leave space for other decorations than the eye. And if you're going to be doing a flower around it, you don't want to make those ovals too big. I will now do the upside down heart nose. So this is what I got so far. Okay, still looking a little plain. And I'm going to be doing those teeth. So like I said before, it's like if you're doing drawing almonds, draw two almonds first together. I will probably outline with a darker color and then you just do some other ones that are either the same size or slightly smaller. In the end, I definitely want them, the two ends to have them smaller. Then you just cut across like if it has braces and those are the teeth. So that's pretty much the first thing that you should do and then you can just go ahead and be creative. So what I would like to do is that I remember that pop art signs sort of look like clouds and I'm planning to do that on the forehead. I always like to think of those clouds looking like popcorn because they kind of remind me. So I have that going over there. I'm going to be putting some dot art and I might actually write a word there, but I'm also going to make sure that when we look at some pop art signs, they also have something that resembles sort of like kind of star shapes sticking out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that as well. And it should be a contrasting color. Now, if you want to really pay homage to the pop art sign, you can stick with primary colors, which would be red, um, yellow, and blue, but you don't have to do that. <clears throat> so I'm leaving that there. I haven't decided what to write. Maybe I just simply will write pop. Okay, over here, I think I want to do some flowers. So I'm going to get, again, it would be nice if I had more. By the way, you could technically speak, you can use a color pencil to color inside, but if you do use a color pencil, you have to make sure that you are coloring very lightly because you can basically crack your clay sugar skull and you don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that because I don't have a lot of colors. And I'm gonna color that the nose red inside. It's outlined with hot pink. Inside, I definitely want a flower that is gonna be connecting with my eye. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some petals on this eye. Um, and you might have to kind of go over it more than once just because clay and the marker, that little sort of remaining flower might actually make it seem like it's not fully working. So I'm only, I'm only gonna do half of a flower over here. I'm gonna leave this space over here alone. And I wanna do some more petals. So I did initially four petals. I'm gonna go ahead and make some petals in between just to kind of make it stand out a little bit more. Now, I can just leave it hot pink, 
but I think I want to create a little bit of contrast. So I'm going to get uh, the color yellow because I think yellow will create contrast or I can do turquoise, but I think I'm leaning towards that yellow. So I will go ahead and make this yellow. I am using a color pencil in this case. I'm holding my sugar skull firmly and that's just going to look really cool with the hot pink and the yellow. I have enough contrast. So go take a look. Right now, I want the inside to be darker just because I kind of want to also create more contrast. So I'm going to just go ahead and sort of make a moon, a green moon over here. Like a moon shape. There you go. And over here, I think I'm going to go with a heart in the other one. Now, you could put any design that you want inside the eye. It's totally up to you. But so far, this is what I got going. I think I'm going to go ahead and do the word pop. Um, so I'm going to just simply, if you were doing bubble letters, if we had more space, we could do it with more bubble letters. But you could just put your color marker and go over it a few times, and that will create the illusion that the letter is not just, or the words is not just simply written. You're kind of making, and you can outline it with a darker color, but you need to make sure that if you are going to, in fact, uh, use a darker color, you need to make sure that it is thin enough marker and that this is dry so that it won't blur in. So right now I have the word pop. I'm gonna go ahead and get another color, the orange. So I outlined the cloud with an orange and I'm going to be making some dots. Um, and when you're doing dots, it's not polka dots, like random dots like that. You want to kind of make all of them the same size and you want to kind of space them as equally as possible. So that way it will look like it's definitely dot art and that was your intention as opposed to just random polka dots. Okay, so, so far I have pop. I think it looks pretty cool. I think inside this area, I want to do a turquoise as far as the stars go. And I could either do lines or I can also do, again, dot art. And when you kind of look at it close up, you can notice the color. But when you go back, it looks like if you have a lighter color, which is one of the cool things about the dot art. So again, I'm spacing out those dots as equally as possible. So this is what I got so far. I think it's coming out pretty cool. Um, I don't, I feel like this eye right over here doesn't have enough. So maybe what I will do is I will make some like sort of, you can also go the spider web route. And I think I'm going to do that. Again, I don't have a lot of colors with me right now, but that's okay. So I'm going to pretend that they're, these are spider webs, green spider webs. Make sort of wiggly lines. And then I'm going to make a little, so you, you don't want to just go ahead and swoop across. You kind of want to make sort of a curve on each section so that it looks like it's actual spider webs. You can even draw a spider on the spider web with a black color marker or a black pencil. So that's what I got so far. Um, I want to make, um, I want this. I want this to dry a little bit, and then I'm going to go ahead and draw the spider. Um, let's see about this section. So this section, we could do something like fire. So I'm going to go do some flames. And you don't have to just use red or yellow. You can actually put a touch of blue because flames have a touch of blue on it. If you look at it closely enough, you'll see that there is definitely a touch of blue. So I'm going to go ahead and do a tiny little line of blue, very tiny. This is how it looks so far. And then I'm going to go with yellow inside and I kind of want to <clears throat> outline it with a red so that it can look like it has all the colors of the fire. Now it doesn't look so much like fire. If I had a bigger background, it would look much better. I'm gonna go wait for that and I'm going to actually outline it with a darker color. You can even, let's see if this pen works. I'm gonna go so, yeah, my pen is actually working. So that will be my nice thin line over here. Again, if you're using something other than a marker, you need to make sure that you are doing it more gently because you don't wanna crack that other surface. So this looks sort of 
sort of like a flame. I would say not say it's my best, but over here I can go ahead and do a spider. So I start off with making an oval shape and then making my eight legs that are four on each side. And the pen is actually working pretty good. So there I go, I have my spider on my spider web. I think that's it for now. So you could definitely add more things. So something that you should know is that at home I did one, and if you have any nail polish, clear nail polish, that would be nice to do an extra coat of clear nail polish. That would kind of protect it more, but it also gives it a nice shiny surface. I also have in my home some glitter nail polish that doesn't have too much glitter, but it has a tiny bit, so it creates a little bit of that nice shiny glitter factor, so you can also do that as well. Anyway, I hope that you enjoy the video, and I'm looking forward to seeing what you did. Bye, have a good one.